on that after you got started. I am proud of you right now. That was great. Dude, flashback to episode one through like episode a hundred and whatever the fuck we lost Ernie at. It, we were talking about that. It was somewhere in like the 150, 160 range, maybe 170. I remember we did 150. We were doing something like the episode 100. Dude, you didn't leave before two, did you? Pussy. Jesus, I gotta get out of this abusive relationship. This shit is terrible. <laughs> yeah, boys! I'm just super jazzed to have everybody back. This feels like all those times that we got together in real life, except Ernie's here. <laughs> he wasn't at anything! Son of a bitch didn't come to anything. Didn't come to Chicago. Didn't come to New York. Like, didn't come to shit. No. No. No, I... Yeah, I haven't met the son of a bitch. I keep trying, too. I'm like, here's an olive branch. I'm coming up to damn near your town. He's like, nah. Nah, I'm good. He's like, that will change, though. That will change next year. Yeah, sure. Because I'm just going to flash back to the previous five and say that probably not. But, you know, hey, I'm willing. No, that'll change. That'll change. Yeah. That'll Last time I talked to Ernie. I promise you that Okay. Change. Real story. Last time I talked to Ernie about coming down for a visit or doing anything, he's like, I don't know, man. There's a travel ban in Missouri about everybody being racist down there. Is it safe? <laughs> I don't really want to come. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Oh, fuck, yeah. That was supposed to happen. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, man. Sorry. I'm just I got into the reminiscing bits, and that's that's what I that's what I got invested for. So you guys All right, all right. So, backstories. These two fellas were with me. Were the founding three members of the podcast. We did this, right? So, if you've been listening to Lola since the beginning, you will recognize both of these fine gentlemen. Ernie filled the role of like Lola punching bag beautifully for many years. Uh, he is uh, the mild-mannered and actually has legitimately relevant shit to say where I filled the same role that I've always filled in Lola, which is derailing that, right? Yeah. Which brings me to Sam, who was the guy who, like, had all the management pieces and, like, did all the work and was, like, the guy who was really kind of the soul of the thing and brought it all together. You don't... Weird man, wink me. That's bullshit. You were. <laughs> Correct. Correct. That's what I'm saying. It's been very hollow since you left. But, but I mean, no, for real though, like, Sam was our host for God knows how many episodes, if we can even remember, 170 plus, right? And I don't know, man, because Ernie, Ernie stuck around for at least 150. I'm thinking, I really believe that. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But like, yeah, so I mean, uh, Sam and Ernie were the OG Lola podcast guys. And you know, Sam, 
he left uh, Lola because he was moving from like his job as like an engineer to chase the LCS dream in California. He and his wife relocated there. And, you know, he spent all of his time like cultivating actual relationships in esports. He could tell you about that. Worked with Travis, a bunch of other shit. Like, pretty cool. Everybody's actually been asking me about that, so you will have to launch into it later. Ernie has managed to move out of his mom's basement. So that's awesome. <laughs> you know. Oh, he did. Yeah, the background of your camera has improved so much. <laughs> By the way, you have like nice. I have a nice, nice little flower. Room. You have olive green walls, like real woodwork, nice flower. You don't have like a vitamin D lamp keeping you alive. I could bring that out still. <laughs> so, backstory: Ernie showed up to the podcast. He's like, "Yeah, man, I I got this vitamin D lamp. You put it on, and it shoots light in your face, and it makes you feel healthier and shit." And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. And so he turns it on during the podcast and it bleaches him out. He looks like a fucking ghost. That's quite <laughs> and I was like, it blended in with all like, of the background too because it, like, it was so bright. It, it showed. Oh, yeah. And the walls were white too. So you could see like some eyeballs kind of moving around and like a hairline. But that was it. So, uh, yeah, he got the. He had this vitamin D lamp, and I'm still not sure it wasn't just like a normal LED lamp, but... Did you, did you buy it from a store, or like a guy with a trench coat? Uh, I bought it off of Amazon, I believe. Alright. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. So, uh, yeah, these guys have literally been here since the beginning. These are the founders of Lola. Like, Sam and I came from Sarcastic Summoners together. Oh, God. Yeah, way back. Way back. Yeah, somebody wrote an email into the show, like, eight months ago, and they were like, hey, are you the guy from Sarcastic Summoners? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I was like, uh, did you like that show? Because if you did know, that wasn't me. So, uh, yeah, we, we did a show called Sarcastic Summoners. It exploded literally overnight. And I don't mean exploded like it took off and got huge. I mean it imploded would be the better. Like, collapsed in on itself like a dwarf star becoming a black hole. Died. And Sam and I decided we weren't done podcasting yet because we really liked it. So we switched over to We Made Lola. And, uh, you know, we brought in Ernie because uh, Sam's like, I know a guy. And I was like, good enough. I just, like, we just friend and we played leagues a few times. And Ernie, like, was that guy that was, like, correcting people about, like, no, it's like 25 minutes or something that I know. So, you know, that kind of guy, I'm like, yeah, oh, I was, I'm be perfect for the show. Yeah. yeah. I was that uh, analytic person. Yeah, Ernie was our vaguely autistic member of the podcast to begin with so <laughs> what autistic what into like okay fine anyway insensitive anyway uh so like yeah ernie uh ernie was like stats figures i know everything about all the little stuff and i you know took tremendous delight in derailing all those conversations and you know, yeah, and Ernie, I forgot, is a specialist at literally every champion in the game when it's powerful. That would be the Ernie Kim thermometer is like, what is S tier? Ernie's a main of that now. Like, it just got announced. Ernie was a main of it a week ago. You know, it, it's total bullshit. But, uh, you know, this is like kind of the OG crew. These are the guys who we all got this thing off the ground. So I thought for 250 I would catch everybody, throw us all back into a room, see if we've still got any kind of chemistry at all, and uh, talk about you know where you guys have been, what have you done, where are we at since Lola, because I know people have been asking about Sam, and there are actually a lot of people remember Ernie, and he still hangs out in the community from time to time, so...
By the way, look at that. Oh, yeah, I see the guy. Root of all beers. Okay. So, okay, I think I've got it somewhat fixed. Can you guys hear this or just turn it up? Either way. Yeah, it just Blake's OBS settings, but he's too old to figure out how they work here. Correct. Yeah. That's actually very accurate. I am old. So, so hopefully <laughs> when this comes out on the podcast, it's actually correct. Like Dude, Blake, I'm 30 now. You're 30 now. Welcome. This is the age when shit just starts mysteriously I've been breaking. For almost a full year now. Really? Dude. I, I turned 31 at the end of this month. Oh shit. Dude, I so I'll tell you this. Let me just warn you, Are fellas. We back into it now? Yeah, no, we're back in. I don't care. I'll 16. I'll make I'll make a deal. 17. We're back. Here we go. So let me tell you guys what 30 does. So like in my 20s. I would get injured and I'd be like, oh yeah, what, uh, fucking got hurt, you know, playing full contact, whatever, out of the quad, pulled something, I'll be fine tomorrow. And like in my 30s, I'm like, I am far worse injured, I slept sideways. Like, I, I, I totally know what you mean. I was like, oh my god, this is worse than full contact everything in my 20s. I, I I slept sideways or something oh, at my neck. Like, have you guys... Being afraid to go to bed in the wrong position. You know? Have you guys ever thrown out your back? I mean, like, really thrown out your back. No, my, my back is, like, strained a little bit from the move, but, like, you know, not thrown out. I okay. have injured myself. Yeah, just, just wait. That is the worst. So I threw out my back, and literally... I always thought, like, old men were just kind of pussies whenever they did this. I was like, oh, you threw out your back. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> you know, and so I was, uh, I wasn't even doing anything that was, like, tremendous. Like, I wasn't lifting something heavy or, like, wrestling a bear. You know, it was literally just, like, I bent over to pick up something not heavy, stood back up, and it went, Ugh! and then I just kind of fell over. And I could, because I couldn't straighten back out, and I was off balance, because, you know, your back just, you plank standing up. And I just went, err, poof. And I, was, I go, ah! And, my, and my, my wife is like, what? What happened to you? And I'm like, ah, I can't, I can't move. Oh, God. I was like, ah, I don't know. it hurts. It hurts to do anything. <laughs> oh god i can't roll over even oh god and she's like what what happened to you i was like i think i threw out my back this is what that feels like oh god this is terrible and for like two fucking days i like like it went away after a little while but then you get scared because like you just remember that the last time I did this thing, it like zap and you're just done, right? So for the next like two, three days, like I would like gingerly bend over to pick something up and I would make sure to get up as slow as humanly possible. So if I did lock up or if it did seize me with pain, that I wouldn't fall over like a felled tree, right? And like, I felt 180 years old whenever, I mean, cause it's anything, everything you do, right? Like I was pooping and I would get off the toilet and I'd just be very, <laughs> very slow about it. Cause I'm like, when I stand all the way up, I don't want to fall pantsless and have my pants, like have my family have to come rescue me, you know? Nope. So. I don't know, man. 30s is where just shit starts going sideways on you. So enjoy that, boys. Because it didn't. Low 30s, you're fine. You feel the same. You might as well be 20. Like 32. That's, That's still low. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I mean like 30, 31. Like low, low 30s. I'm, keep in mind, I'm from the point of reference, I'm 36 right now. So I can't speak to what shit goes sideways after this. Except my hairline. That's gone. I used to have one of those. <laughs> now, not so much. You pull it off well. Thanks. You know, I actually don't have to get haircuts anymore. I just use a number two trimmer. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, I just comb my hair and it falls out. <laughs> no, no. Not that bad yet. 
I don't live in like a radioactive facility, Sam. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. I, all I have to do is look stern and my hair just falls out in clumps. Turns out I'm a ghoul. You know. Yeah, so no, I actually like use a fucking like a beard trimmer and I just kind of go like this and that's that's it anymore. And the, the fucked up thing is like, I've realized that my hair has gotten so bad and so short and it looks only looks kind of normal whenever you cut it super short. So I was like, oh my God, I don't even get haircuts anymore. I just mow my lawn. <laughs> yeah, like that's what has changed about my life. Like this is sad. So, anyway, you guys though, you guys, what happened, Ernie? You wanted to you wanted to play catch up. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll start off because all of the exciting kicker information comes from Sam later because. No, he's, you're crazy. Oh man, no, he is. Uh, so basically, after I quit the podcast, I got kind of more involved in. You went through my a own. hard depression. I got more involved in prescription medications. Yeah, heart depression and everything like that. No. Vitamin D lamp snapped like, him right out I of it. Like focusing on my on my own life and whatnot, like just seeing what I what my ambitions were and what whatever, and then like I started dating. You know, like obviously, I had a plan when I was younger to get married, and uh, yeah, started dating, dated a few people. Um, now. Uh, year and a half later, but I am now with my fiance. Yay! So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm planning my wedding, mine and her wedding, and, uh, yeah, it's been... It's been so what time is the wedding going to be? When is it, it going to be? Uh, do I have to say it on stream? No, I mean, is it like, what, is it next year? Is that what you were hinting at inviting me next to? Next summer, it's next summer. It's next summer at the end of the summer. Um, okay, so is that what you were hinting at seeing me in yeah. a year? Was it for your wedding? Exactly. Okay, all right. Then, yes, I will come to that. I will <laughs> yeah. see you in a year. Yeah, and so, yeah, we're, I'm, we're planning our wedding and everything and stuff like that. And it's just been stressful. I mean, I didn't know at first people that don't own houses right now, like, just the amount of it's a good investment. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna discount that. But the amount of work you have to put into a house constantly is a big struggle. I, <laughs> I just I hold on. I, I just had at the, at the beginning of uh, at the end of last year. So just like December 27th, I bought a house. I just had an and epiphany, by the way. We have gone from where a few years ago we used to talk about video games, and now we're talking about marriage, home ownership, and back pain. Let's complain about HOAs. Too. <laughs> like, I tell you what about HOAs. That shit's rip off right there. You make sure you get in a good neighborhood early. No parked cars on the lawn. Some bullshit. Anyway, go on. But yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I don't know the the age range of. Listeners and stuff. Yeah, it's like, 16. They're eating this shit up. <laughs> like, I don't want a dessert. If you are on the younger age, if you are on the younger age, it's a good investment to buy a house. Just you have to put a lot of work I mean, into you don't it. Know that. By the time they're able to buy a house, maybe it's the renters. Maybe well, no, they're all like millennials or younger, too. so they it's a rent. Big commitment. Okay. Maybe it's a big commitment. Hostels. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's like a commune country by the time we get there. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? So, so anyway, Ernie, you've got a super girlfriend now, so that's cool. Yeah. So, Blake, uh, for those that didn't know, Blake hates the word fiance. So, well, it sounds so pretentious. In 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 front of Blake, I have to call her my super girlfriend because right. she's an upgraded. Right, you're better than a girlfriend, but not yet a wife. What? Yeah. They're not girlfriends any. They're not girlfriend boyfriend anymore. Right, they're super girlfriend. Right to be Jazzed by the power of the yellow sun. They're your super girlfriend now. <laughs> the yellow sun and vitamin D lamps. <laughs> vitamin D lamps. That's why he's got one. <laughs> Just to keep her powerful in case villains attack. But yeah, I mean uh yeah, so like 
doing all that life stuff, man. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still part of the community. I, I play here and there with the community and whatnot. Um, but that's usually during my free times where I can find time to play. But um, other than that, like, I've been just kind of coasting through life. Biggest question: You happy right now? I am super happy, man. That's all that matters, brother. That's all that matters. Well, yeah, no, I just wanted him to like focus on the the right things, you know. Just whatever. You're happy now. Yeah, hey. Everyone says hi. Does she want to become internet famous? No. Well, she has her own YouTube channel. Viral she's so she's famous. actually probably more internet famous than us already. <laughs> so. YouTube channel, but she basically does vlogs. So, yeah. All right, Sam, man, what's yeah. happening? All right, it's your life, man. Since moving to California, right, let's, let's I mean, that was the whole that was the whole deal. Yeah, that's with, some uh, leaving, right? That's some neat Golden Guardian swag you have on your head yeah, there. You, out and then you moved out to California with your wife and all right, all right. We'll, st we'll start there from the beginning and go as quick as possible oh hey so, Sam did I show you my cool c9 jersey I just got today yeah it's really that's cool. that's because Golden Guardians didn't send me one it's weird it's almost like, like I don't send you one? <laughs> it's almost like yeah because I ordered it it's almost like I don't know a guy on the inside you know but I feel like I do I will pay for shipping. That's not a problem. <laughs> Check it out. It's, it's got the name and everything. We did it. I don't know if I can get custom. I don't care, man. Just okay, anyway. have somebody sign it. That's even better. So, um, we had... We were doing the podcast, and at the time, I was like, hey, you know what? I kind of want to do esports. So I paddled, on, paddled with it a little bit. Did some stuff for, like, Walden Green, who's now the head coach of Shield. Well, I mean, to be... Back up a little bit. You applied to Riot, too, right? Oh, yeah. like the on-site interview which uh was unfortunate but after that i was like oh i really like this is really cool i want to do this and then i played with the idea i was doing the podcast at the time and then years later i eventually drew up the courage and got some like um affirmation from weldon working with him that he's like oh you're good at this you could do this i'm like okay here we go so i like basically spent all my free time just grinding and then eventually at some point I had stuff that I needed to do that was like I needed more hours to do the things I needed to do to to get into esports and I like quit my job too because like I, I paid off all our me and my wife paid off all our debt we got married during that time too and I'm like she was supporting us on a, her own income so I was like well this kind of sucks and I appreciate the sacrifice, but like when it came down to it, like my family's important, my wife's important. So I'm like, I'm gonna sprint through this as fast as possible. That's why I stopped doing Lola because I was like, Lola was a fun thing that we were doing. And I think we had a lot of different expectations going into it too. While well, suddenly this became like, this is like almost my portfolio. And then expecting everyone else to like treat it like a job was not cool and not fun for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that I'm just like, you know what? I have other stuff I need to be doing too. So that's when I decided to step back because I'm like, hey, it's not just me I'm worried about. I'm worried about like a family now. So I just quit that. I was grinding a ton and then I uh, started working with Hotline League uh, with Travis Gafford. And then after about a year of that, my wife finally found a job for us in LA. So we moved out here and then I made some connections. I was doing stuff with Golden Guardian freelancing and then I got a job uh, April of 2019 so that's only like five uh, yeah five months ago. ago yeah so I've been working with Golden Guardians uh, at the end of full time from the end of spring split and then full time uh, the summer split as well and coincidentally that's when G GG turned it all the way around right yeah we were kind of yeah we, there was a lot of things that were changing you know we had a whole new roster because the year one roster was kind of flopped real hard mm. and then even like the competitive staff there's only one person that survived that whole competitive 
part of the organization. Right. And then they also brought you on, which is really the difference maker. <laughs> yeah. So then, like, what they noticed me and the videos that I created. And it's so funny because I never, I remember, like, I would never consider myself a video editor. And pretty much that's what I do. I'm a video editor. And it was super intimidating because you see people, like, on Team Liquid or 100 Thieves that have been doing this for decades. Most people that do video editing are like, this is their passion, that's what they want to do. Like, they've known they want to do that and they've been shooting home movies and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, so I've edited some things for Lola. We did a Lola Plays thing. I just like watched all these YouTube tutorials. I'm like, I'm not a video editor. There's no way I can catch up to that. But then I guess I was able to find like a lane and like make more memey stuff that kind of didn't have to look really nice and kind of looked bad, but like purposely bad. Yeah, yeah, like good, bad. Yeah, good, bad. So that got me noticed, and because I was kind of doing that for Hotline League, and that's when Golden Guardians noticed me. And then, yeah, I, that's pretty much what I've been making. I've been making more like serious videos too, but mostly what I, my quote unquote claim to fame would be like the meme videos that Golden Guardians posted. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're like, I think the biggest one was like 250K views on Twitter. That was like the Haunted Miss Cornhole. That was like the shooting, recreation of the shooting, shooting star meme. Oh, okay. That's nice. Oh, it's good. And there's another one. There's like a bird is a word, like Frogman one that did pretty well. And a few of those things. But yeah, I pretty much like, it's weird. My official title is eSports Marketing Analyst. Um, not at all accurate to what I do. But uh, pretty much I would say, like, I'm a content creator for GTS. So I've been just, like, even in this offseason, we're figuring out how we're going to approach our content this this coming year. And we've been doing, like, market research for our audience and stuff like that. So, but that's where I'm at now. I mean, I just moved because I was living in Long Beach, which is, like, the southmost part of uh, L.A. County. And now I'm in Torrance, which is, like, between the offices in Culver City, which is, like, uh, near Santa Monica. Because my commute, I was commuting for like, I was commuting an hour twenty probably each way. God that really damn. Really sucked. But I was doing it, and I was like happy to do it too because I was like really excited to get into esports. Mm. But um, yeah, now it's only like a forty minute commute, twenty to forty minute commute depending on traffic. But that's why I was late today. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. Uh, you get a pass. You were actually the only one that was ever prepared for Lola, so Thanks, we'll we'll call it even exactly even my 300 <laughs> episodes late and your one balances right out yeah that's pretty much it so Thanks. cool man so like just to reminisce what are some of your favorite lola moments because like mine all happened off camera but I'm, i want to hear your guys first i know we won't duplicate Mm. <laughs> Does it have to be about us? No. Can it can it be shitting on Blake? Yeah, here? absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's no, I right. expect it. I expected it to be. Yeah. Uh, I either expected you to shit on me or to say some corny ass thing about how you love the fans or something. I didn't know which which way you were gonna go. Say that. Why would I say that? Yeah, you're right. Screw the right. Right. screw the fans, right, Ernie? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I found happiness and peace in my life, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it, it did not include the fans. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, like, just the prep work, man. Like, Blake doing absolutely none of it. <laughs> <laughs> those, were, those were the best times, you know? Like, me and Sam were, like, like filling out these Google Docs and preparing for what we're talking about and then Blake would have absolutely nothing and wing it the whole episode. <laughs> like, Those are the good times. It's all good. Those are the good times. Well, dude, to be fair, though, it worked. I mean, I thought it worked. I mean, you like, were picking and choosing at anything you could grab. Whether it's, whether <laughs> it's my slurping sounds. Oh, no. Everybody like, picked and choose on your fucking <laughs> slurping sounds. We got letters you know oh yeah so reviews those of yeah literal reviews like i can hear ernie drink soup can you tell him to stop it's terrible it burns my <laughs> ears you know yeah, so i mean throughout throughout a lot of if i mean if you're gonna start a podcast man it's it's a 
definitely a work in progress for like the first 50 plus episodes and stuff and you're gonna get reviews of how what to fix what to work on and whatever just take it as con like constructive criticism you know and we were doing that like we were working on everything <laughs> you know maybe was, don't eat ramen live prepping on stuff and like there was less shit talk on me because like Blake was getting nicer and all that other shit. I was getting nicer. <laughs> like once you hit thirty, Blake. Yeah, yeah once I know, once I hit thirty, I fucking mellowed out on Ernie. You know, it didn't go so hard in the paint. No, Ernie, that was loving. That was loving taunting. I know, I know, I know. So, anyway, okay, Sam, do you want to go last? Do you want me to go then? Uh, I'll go next. I'll okay, go, go ahead, next. go for it. So, one of the most memorable for sure. I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of good memories, but there's two reasons. One, because this puts us on the board of League Podcast. And two, it was just super fun as hell. When we played Trinity Force in the best of three, the tournament. Because, like, we had a very small following. Because, like, none of us had any internet footprint, like, outside of our personal lives, right? Right. And then, and even then it was probably pretty small. It was just, like, Facebook or whatever, right? And then we decided to play against Trinity Force. And they were, at the time, the understanding about Trinity Force was like there's just these like all diamond elo like really cocky like no they were the heavy favorites yeah like and no doubt also a really big podcast too you know mm -hmm. um, and then we were like no one and then I think Ernie I don't think was flat yet I think I hit flat. I was the highest no I was you the were the highest besides Ba mm -hmm. and you and Ba were, were plat. the only plat jungler one trick Maokai <laughs> and mm -hmm. then like everyone else was like gold Pretty much. Yep. And then we found Ba, who was our ringer, which was like a diamond eighty carry. No, he wasn't diamond yet. No, he was plat. Mm -mm, he was plat. And it was a two zero, right? Yeah. It was yeah, best was of three, time. and we two zeroed. And uh, yeah, we there were times when I thought for sure we were gonna lose that game. I remember Adam played Rumble and Lissandra. Uh, uh, D Claude played Pantheon both games. I played Janna both games and it was amazing by the way uh and then uh let's see bob played jinx and graves and graves when graves wasn't a jungler mm -hmm. when graves was an adc yeah and then sam played maokai yeah i played maokai and all and i did was flash root people and then die and it worked <laughs> and it I worked there's for two games yeah that's right ernie played there that's right and anxiety and like knees shaking you know like oh yeah i in so long that, that we wanted that to though. win that game like we Talking really wanted though. to win that game yeah so we really wanted to win like we were just very thirsty for winning and like well i mean it for so much time doing the analytics for oh, our yeah. team though. yeah yeah he I did pick and ban like uh draft like notebook spreadsheet yeah we had like eliminations notebook from ernie and like <laughs> No, but I mean, for us, it was like high stakes because we were like, this is going to be the thing that like puts Lola on the map, you know, because we're going to talk about it. T-Force is going to talk about it. People are going to hear about us. Oh, it's going to be so cool. And, you know, so we like heavy pressure to like perform well because we didn't want to just get ass crushed, but we kind of expected to lose. Mm -hmm. But like we were going to go down swinging if we went down like that was our game plan. And then we ended up like... No, it was uh, Dom. He was silver. He was awesome. So, yeah, I like Dom a lot. Dom was a good guy. Um, but yeah, that was just, that was so hype. And like, we had like a lot more views um, mm -hmm. and listens after that. That was, that was really, really cool. Because like, that's the whole collaboration thing. That's what we wanted to do. Um, yeah, that was the thing that really actually spiked us into being like a solid, you know, we are one of the league podcast podcasts. Yeah, yeah so I th that was super cool. Okay, mine. We went to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and Ernie wasn't there, so Ernie doesn't remember any of this shit because he's not a good friend. And uh, so Sam and I went. And, uh, Didn't we have a 20-minute cutoff? Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So Sam got super drunk, like ludicrously drunk, and ended up carrying him back. And like, the, was it the second or third day? I don't remember. Okay, but you know what? No, I was not ludicrously. I was not ludicrously drunk. No one had to carry me. I bought you soup. I like. No, no, we were drunk for like 24 hours straight, though. It was crazy. Like I went to bed drunk and I woke up drunk, and we were like just drinking all day long. Oh yeah, it was hard. But the problem was I was hungover, and my hangovers are, like, bad, so... Yeah, he felt like shit. Like, Sam looked like he was on death's door. Yeah. And so I, like, literally walked around in Manhattan until I found, like, a place that sold, like, a bucket of chicken noodle soup. And I brought this motherfucker some soup, and I'm like, here, eat this. It will tr it will make you feel better, right? I don't right? even think I could eat it until, like, hours later when it was cold. Yeah, no, you didn't. You didn't eat it for a long time. But uh, the best part was like, so we went down there. It was like me and Brad and Sam, and we met. Uh, who was the? Yeah, we met the vampire friend. Who I forget his fucking name. Angel. That's right, Angel. We met Angel, who was like a guy we kind of vaguely knew online. We played a few games with him, and Brad knew him all right. And he lived in New York, so he was supposed to be the guy that's like, oh, you guys are coming to New York. That's awesome. I'll show you around your area, and I'll, I'll like hook you up with all this like these are the places that we go to as locals and all this and that was what we were gonna do right and he didn't know shit we walked in circles for like three miles and i'm like oh, that's right we were making a joke we walked in squares because new york city is just a grid, is, so yeah it's just a grid so i was like dude we have walked past the same place like three fucking times and this thing is a square like do you have any idea where he's going and he's finally like no, not really. I live in the other like island. It. And I was like, God, damn. <laughs> so, like, we all go back to the room. And keep in mind, we booked this room out. Like, we didn't have money at all. Like, none of us had any money to pay for this, really. So it was, like, tiny, like, not big hotel rooms. Like, I found a place that was actually pretty close to the venue. And it was actually pretty cheap. It was, like, 90 or 100 bucks a night or something. Mm -hmm. But it was not, like, large, right? It, it was not at all. Now and if we did that, Lola's making so much bank, we'd be able oh, to... Oh, yeah, to just a buy a hotel. <laughs> you know, I would, it's whatever. So, actually, we did Airbnb at Chicago. That actually turned out all right. That was, that was good. So, anyway, we went to this place. It wasn't that big. There was, like, a like a one big bed and, like, a chair that didn't extend out to a couch. And, like, uh, another chair that was, like, you wouldn't ever sleep in it because it's not big enough. It and like, three people. We fit, like... Yeah, we felt like five people in. Well, like, we didn't plan on Angel being there, right, at all. We're like, when is, you, you're you from here, just go home. We'll see you in the morning, just go home and come back, and that's fine. And he's like, no, I'm just going to stay with you guys. And I was like, we don't, okay, I guess, like, where the fuck are you going to sleep? So we all get to sleep, and it's like, Three of us kind of like sardined into a mattress and we look over and Angel is sleeping like upside down in a chair with his feet sticking up like like the opposite of how a human being would sit in a chair. So imagine my head being feet and then my my actual head just dangling down towards the ground upside down like I would think somebody would die sleeping like that right. So, he's certainly not 30. He probably would have died. <laughs> right? I can't imagine pulling that shit now. But, like, we looked over and we're like, is he sleeping like a fucking bat? Like, <laughs> oh my god, he is. Like, he's asleep he's right now. Dude, he's a <laughs> weird fucking guy. <laughs> but, like, oh man, that was a memory. my ticket at 1 a.m. on Friday and then called in to take a personal day in the morning and then took my flight out to meet you guys like at I don't know like 10 p.m. or something like that yeah we were at a bar and I had all my luggage with, or my duffel with me we went out and had pho for the first time yeah that's right you're like what is all this grass in my food <laughs> it was good grass was good. it was good I have to admit it was good I never tried it I want to try something new. I will tell you my most hated Lola memory is when you made me eat chicken feet in fucking Chicago. That's <laughs> disgusting. 
There's no delicacy of that. It's just cartilage, and it just tastes like shit. Like, it tastes like I'm eating pieces of flecked super glue that has, like, dried on. There is no meat. I mean, there's no meat. It's just literally, like... Yeah, that's it. It's like the garbage parts. Well, you're like, yeah, let's get some chicken feet. Like, you try these chicken feet. And I'm like, yeah, you're, you're a white kid from Missouri. I'm like, you're gonna try some chicken feet. I was like, I'll, I'll try anything once. Okay, here we go. I was like, this isn't food. Like, it's no part of this is food. You know why? Am I carry the food. <laughs> I was like, they, these things help whatever I'm going to eat get here. That's how they work. You don't eat them because then they don't, it, that was fucking gross. But the rest of the stuff was good. The dumplings were really good, to be fair. And the bubble tea, that shit was gross. I didn't, I'm not a fan of bubble tea. I can't do that. What, about the bubble tea? Well, no, that shit was gross. Like, we went over there. Oh, you're so wrong. No, I'm sorry. Like, I went there, and oh, God. I went and we so looked up. And there is fact, and that's a, that's a fact that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, we went, and we tried. I tried it. I was there. I ordered what you told me to order, and it was gross. I tried. I really did. Did you make him order, like, taro or something, or what? No, I probably had him, like, get a mango soup, like, mango slushy with bubbles in it. I didn't like anything. It was weird. I don't know what I, like, I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect out of it to begin with. Like, I wasn't sure what this experience was going to be like. And then I'm like, this is like, and I expected the bubbles to actually like pop and not be like solid things. Yeah, yeah. I didn't expect it to be solid tapioca. I thought it was going to be something like a fat, slow piece of carbonation or something is what I, I was looking at. They do have popping bubbles that have like syrup or like juice in it. Yeah, that's what I was expecting because I saw other people drinking this and I was like, oh, okay. the bubbles popped. And then you get, ooh, look, it tastes like syrup. And I'm like, that's just like pudding in, in tea. Like a week without boba, man. Oh. I mean, like, dude, I, I've got an open mind to Asian stuff. The Korean barbecue at. You know that we actually like made on the table. That was that shit was amazing. The the like the stuff at the Chinese place that we went to, and I'm like born in the year of the some awful animal. We looked, yeah, we looked it up on the sign because it was like if you were born in these years, and I'm like the fox or something. Give me something cool. It was like you're born in the year of the fat ass pig, or you know like some shit animal. And I'm like great, like. This is going to go south from here. Let's get bubble tea. And <laughs> it was fucking so gross. The Chicago, the Chicago trip was really fun. Oh, right. And I forgot. I also got like whooping cough while we were there. And you uh, took that ancient Chinese remedy fucking awful didn't work cough syrup. Didn't you have crotch rot too? <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot I got like fucking awful rash crotch rot from like walking everywhere. Had like. This is a fucking rash that went like all, yeah, it went all the way like everywhere from like chub rub to like upper, you know, fupa. It was all just one fucking huge rash. Like anywhere a Depends diaper would cover was all just awful rash. And I'm like, this is like, I got some sort of flesh eating bacteria while I was there. Yes, that was like yeah. one of the best moments. Your wife can yeah, fucking cool. sing. Yeah, she can. She's insane. Well, we got cut off because Brad tried to order, and he's white, and those guys were racist as shit. By the way. No, I think I think they actually had issues with people like drinking, like drinking too much and going crazy. And but we had a huge group, and we Brad could just drink everything. So. I think oh yeah. Yeah, like Brad, he'll just drink. He gets like more like Brad. There's not a whole lot of change. It's just like Brad is, Brad's default is drinking. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's not like a thing. And you know, we went in there, and you know, Brad orders drinks, and the guy's like, no, 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 no. you you get nothing. Like this much soju, you're 
And and then Jane's like, could we get some more drinks? And he's like, for you, ma'am, anything. And I'm like, fuck you, guy. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, and he was so polite really to her. Loud. We were singing super loud, so I think they were just like, oh my god, they're wasted. Yeah, but then, we but I mean, Jane's saying like a fucking angel. They should have recorded her shit, you know. And like, by the way, those karaoke machines, a lot of that shit's in Korean, and I tried to sing like a ah, Korean song, and I got like yay far into it, and I'm like, there's no fucking way I can do this. Yeah. Like, it's impossible to like conceptualize what those sounds are supposed to be like, even when they're written in English. You know? It, it's, like, it's like reading for the first time, because like none of the letters put together make any sense, even if they're all like Romanized characters. But the, the songs are absolutely fucking beautiful. I've never even. It's weird how much, like, culture is available that you are just completely ignorant of whenever you don't experience any of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why everyone needs to travel. So. Get out of Missouri, you know, every now and then. All right. So, in <laughs> classic Lola style, I have planned this segment to be 30 minutes long at max, and it's 52 right now. Well, so. 10 minutes. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Probably not. I'll oh, tell man. I'll tell the guy to cut it. We'll see what happens. I mean, dude, we have had so we switched over to the squadcast thing. It's been great. It's like Zencaster, but it works, right? <laughs> Except we're finding out like all the weird idiosyncrasies to it. And so here's one. When Zill hosts the podcast and I gave him the deal to log into Squadcast, right? It's got, like, I can click it, and it'll show, like, all the things that we've recorded, different episodes, and you get download links from those episodes, and you send them to the audio editor. He downloads the shit, and he edits it all together, right? Awesome. Except that if Zill does it on his machine, it stores it, like, locally in your browser, what you have done. So I can't get the download links for the episodes that he hosted. And so... He hosted it, and he's like, all right, guys, I'm out for a straight week because, like, I've got to work, like, back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back shifts for seven full days. I'll see you guys in a week. And I'm like, okay, man, see you later. Bye. He's the only one that could access the download codes for the audio for the podcast. I didn't realize it until he was, I was like, uh, no audio has been put up for, like, three days. What the fuck's going on? And then... I was like, so realistically, episode 250 was supposed to happen right now. But since we're releasing last week's episode right now, and it says expect a week delay before 250, I think I may just do this because this is like full podcast size. So this will be 250A. I'm so sorry to disappoint you guys for the 250th episode. My apologies. Yeah. <laughs> No, this became 250A, and then we'll do 250.5 with everybody else. I feel like I needed some more entertaining stuff to talk about. Well, fucking A, man. Hook me up with a hat. Yeah, oh. maybe when I come to I want to wear a uh, Golden Guardians. Week, you, you can give me a hat. Well, Ernie, you told me you're too... Ernie, you're coming to California next week? Wednesday? Wednesday night? Dinner time? <laughs> Ernie, you're coming to California next week. Sam has barely moved. I've lived in the same place for like eight years. And you still haven't made your way down here. There's, no, there's nothing in Missouri, that's why. There's nothing in Missouri. I live here! I am here! I am in Missouri! That's not enough. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So, anyway. Hell, I got like right on Ernie's neighborhood. We went to Chicago. I went to go meet... Uh, uh, fucking uh, painless death. He showed up to meet us, and I was like dying that day. Oh god, I felt bad about that. I wanted to hang with that guy so bad, but I was like, I'm gonna throw up and die. This day is over. Like I'm on weird Chinese cough syrup that is not working at all, and I'm just <laughs> coughing my lungs out. Chinese I mean, herbal have medicine. Up. No, I had like a jar of like red medicine with a whole bunch of characters on it. I couldn't read, and the lady's like. This is great for coughs. You should take this. And I'm like, okay, it was fine. It was probably chugging that. I literally slammed the fuck out of that bottle. It was like that much left after one day, and it didn't do anything. Have, have you guys done like a meetup since? Like a big like uh, meetup or anything? Or like hung out with like cast members?
members, like, since I was a part of Lola. Oh, you mean, has the cast done that? I thought you meant, has Ernie and I done that? I mean, clearly, no, we have not. <laughs> clearly not. No. No, we haven't done anything because, like, Worlds hasn't been a thing. We had two, like, NA, uh, or, like, NA finals. Right, in, but, like... In the Midwest, too. Right, but nobody wanted to go. What? Like, I asked the guys, like, does anybody want to meet up in St. Louis? And everybody's like, I don't know. Not really. Like, and I was like, I was like, like does anybody want to come? I was like, St. Louis is literally down the road. We can just, I'll drive there. That's not a big deal. And I was like, or if you guys don't want to do that, you could just come to my basement. We could watch it on this projector screen right back here and just hang out here, have a good time, do a LAN and shit. It'd be way, way more fun and free. And everybody's like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Nobody showed up. Yeah, no, it was like a team full of Ernie Kims. <laughs> like, so, yeah, no, I mean, it didn't really, didn't really happen. But you know, that's okay. I would like to do something like that. I think we are. What I, what I said is like Lola has actually gotten to the point where we can pay our bills. We pay Squadcast, the website, all that stuff. And then, like, we have a little bit left over. And I've been buying people, like, equipment. Like, we got the Yeti mics. And, you know, I bought some, like, cameras and stuff. Like, Endeavorit, the new guy, uh, his camera was so shitty, he looked like he had a face from The Purge. Right? Because it kept freezing. And literally, that was the comment that we got on YouTube. was like, why does Endeavorit look like he was on The Purge? You know? <laughs> So I got him a new camera to help with that. And, you know, but realistically, if we actually have money left over to the point that like we can afford to do something like I want to rent a B&B and get everybody down there, like do a thing. And, you know, the podcast pays for like the lodging and, and shit like that. And we all just hang out. Obviously, you guys are both invited if you, you know, want to make it down to whatever it is I set up doing. I have an appearance fee now. Wait. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Sam just pulls up out of a limo, throws some fucking hats out, like, what's up, plebs? Hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, I remember what it was like to be poor. I'm going to go stay in fucking Froggen's mansion. Are you kidding me? I went from an engineering salary. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck. So, uh, yeah, we'll do that. And like, I, like I said, that's, that's kind of my goal is that's, we tried to do video editing, but that never seems to get off the ground. So I, I kind of thought that's just a waste of money. So I would like to give back to the podcasters for all the Patreon that we get that's over our minimum. And that's something that like these guys, they give so much, I mean, you guys know, you devote so much volunteer time to making this thing happen. And it's like, I want to give back at least something like here's one fun event thank you for your you know effort that i can do like at least once a year so that's what i'm saving for and if i do that obviously you guys are invited uh ernie is perpetually invited until at least he shows up one time uh, so, bare minimum so if it's during the weekend um and after my wedding i may be able to swing by as as many times as i want that is the most non-committal horse shit I've ever heard. There were like three conditions attached to that out of the gate. He just bought himself another year, too, by the way. Right, right. For a year. Yeah, it's, it's after I'm married, on a weekend, and maybe I will come. These are the words that he just used. It has to be a full moon. It has to be a full moon. Pre-Labor Day. Otherwise, it might be, you know, I want to wear white. So, like, fuck, Ernie. <laughs> you know, we're just, we're gonna, we're gonna have to do it in Minneapolis for Ernie. Yeah, we'll just do it at Ernie's house. I'll schedule it there. Be there. The door will be unlocked and he's just gone. <laughs> It'll be like a note that's like, I didn't want to see you guys. Bye. Yeah. Oh, good for Ernie. So. All right, guys. Well, with that, we will fade out. Either one of two things is going to happen. We will start episode 250 now or episode 250 will follow and this is 250a so <laughs> i don't i don't fucking know this went an hour i didn't plan that i, I can't even really say like good night everybody because like
it may be phasing into the next thing. So. <laughs> so let's just talk and slowly trail off as we can't make a good cut for the audio editor. Done. <laughs>